Keep a deep dive episode two. Today we're going to be exploring a college physics explore and apply loose leaf that I just bought using the Keep a Deals page. We're going to analyze the book and we're also going to look at something quite interesting about the chart, which I think some of you might find interesting. If you're new to the channel, my name is Joji Davenport. I'm a high school chemistry teacher and I sell books on Amazon as a side hustle. I do that all through online book arbitrage using a software called Keepa. So if that interests you and you find this content valuable, then hit the subscribe button, follow the journey, and let's do this together. Here's a listing of the loose leaf that I came across using the Keep It Deals page. Right now you can see that to buy this used, you have to spend $95, but I actually just bought it today for a little bit under $20. Let's go in and look at the Keep It chart to do some analyzing. Now we're gonna make this super simple. Let me minimize myself a little bit so that we can go step by step. I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you're probably someone who's new to Keepa or you find the Keepa charts confusing. So let's make this super simple and let's go line by line from most important to least important. Okay, the most important thing is this little green button called the sales rank. Now, one thing that's really important is that Keepa is a free Chrome extension, but if you want to see sales rank, which is by far the most important thing about Keepa, you have to pay, I think it's like a $20 monthly subscription, which is absolutely worth it. And the sales rank is so important because it tells you when the item sells and also how often the item sells. So let's go and take a deep dive into just the sales rank to start. So you can see that the sales rank has a number assigned to it. That number indicates how popular it is in the book category. So if I scroll all the way down to the product page, you can see that this says the best seller rank in books. What this means is this book is the 2,114,000th and 65th most popular book on Amazon. It's also the 1,929th book um, that's most popular in the physics subcategory of books. Okay, that number basically just means how popular the book is. The lower that number, then the more popular it is. So if you have a rank of one, that's that book would be more popular than any other book on Amazon. Now, what you need to know about sales rank is that whenever you see the sales rank drop significantly, for example, if you see the sales rank drop from 2.3 million all the way down to 131,000, that tells you that the book actually sold because it became significantly more popular. Now, if I zoom back out, you can see that all of these drops where the sales rank goes from a really high mark and then falls off almost like it looks like a cliff, that is a sale and you can actually count those sales. So for example, I could zoom in to May 29th to June 4th and I can count three total sales. This would be sale number one, this would be sale number two, and this would be sale number three. And what this allows us to do is basically see how often the book is selling and when it's selling. For example, if I zoom in at this point in time right here, I can actually verify that this book sold here on December 4th because it says Sunday, December 4th at 1833. That's when the sales rank dropped. That's when the book became more popular. That's when the book sold. So why is it so important that we know when the book sells? Because if you're coming across books out in the wild, or if you're doing online arbitrage, theoretically, you would only want to buy books that are selling. Meaning if you're buying books that aren't selling, or if you're buying books without using Keepa, and hence you don't know if they're selling, that could be a problem because if you buy a book that no one wants to buy, then there's no way for you to make money. Now, the interesting thing about this book over the last year is that the sales rank actually didn't drop for about the first five or six months out of the year, which means nobody actually bought it. But it looks like there was a little bit more sales velocity the last six months out of the year. Now, an interesting thing that you could do is you can come over here to the data table and to, excuse me, you can come over here to the data tab. You can go to right under current and average. You can actually see the number of sales rank drops in the last 30 days. So you can see that it says sales rank drop in the last 30 days is one. What that would mean is that the book sold one time in the last 30 days. And what we could do is come back to the Keepa chart. We could click this um, month here, which would indicate the last 30 days. And you can see that the sales rank did in fact drop once which indicates one sale. If we go back to the data, data tab, you can see that over the last 90 days, there have been five sales rank drops. So if we come back to the Keepa chart and we go to three months, which would be 90 days, basically what the data tab is saying is that the sales rank dropped five times, which actually is a little bit inaccurate here. One thing that you actually notice is that the sales rank goes from 1.8 million, then it goes down to 211,000, then it goes back up to 1.8 million. That is actually just an error from Keepa. There's no way that a book is gonna increase its sales rank that quickly. What you'll notice happen when a book stops selling is that a sales rank is going to gradually go up like this. So this is actually just one sale and that one sale is right there. So this is one of the reasons why I think it's maybe a little bit misleading to look at the data tab here because this number of drops can include you know, data that is basically incorrect. The data tab is keeping this as two drops, two sales, when in fact, that, in fact that's just one. So in other words, in the last 90 days, this is sold three times. Okay, so that's the sales rank. Sales rank is super important because it lets you know when the book is selling and how often it's selling. And also it allows you to spot trends in terms of when there are specific times during the year where the book might sell more often or when there are times when the book isn't selling at all. For example, January through 
basically June, the book didn't sell at all. Now you can only see that if you use the paid subscription to Keepa, which is about $20 a month, absolutely worth it. And it will definitely pay for itself in many ways. It's the second thing that we're going to look at here is going to be the used price, which is this black dot right here, this black line. So what I'm going to do is just actually get rid of the sales rank for right now, because I just want to use my cursor to hover over this black line. This black line represents the lowest used price on Amazon at that specific time, that point in time. So for example, if we come up here to the product listing page, what you can see is that uh, the price of the book today is actually $95. But <laughs> that's actually a little bit inaccurate because I just bought this copy. Basically, pretty soon the price of this book is going to go from $1246 back up to $95 because that's now the lowest use offer. But basically what you need to know is that this is going to tell you what the lowest use price of that book was at any single day in the past year or three months or however long you want. So for example, if I really wanted to know what this book was selling for, not selling for, what, but what this book was listed for on May 1st, I can actually come here. I can scroll down to April 1st and I can hover over the black use line. And basically what this means is on May 1st on Amazon, if you wanted to buy this book, if you were a customer, you had to spend $56.69 to go ahead and buy that. Okay. So well, the reason why this use price is really helpful is because now you have a guess as to what the book is selling for when you do see the sales rank drop. So if I go ahead and add the sales rank back and I go ahead and zoom in on a time where the sales rank drops, I can basically just figure out the intersection point between what the use price was at that time when the sales rank went down. And so you notice that the price of the used copy was 115.93. What that means is that somebody who bought the book on Amazon had to spend at least $115.93 because that was the lowest used price available on Amazon. You couldn't have bought the book for anything cheaper than that. So if you bought the book, that's how much you would have bought the book for. Now, the reason why this is really helpful is because one thing you can clearly see is that the price of any book on Amazon is dynamic. It changes all the time. So even though it sold for hundred at least $115.93, you could even look back here in June where you see the sales rank drop right at $44.39. And what that means is the book could have sold for $44.39 there. If we look at these two sales rank drops, those books could have been selling at $49.36. And I say at least $49.36 because there's also the prime gap, which we don't really talk about here. But the point being, if you look at the sales rank and you look at the used price and you overlap the two, it's going to indicate what the book is selling for. And that lets you then figure out what you might want to buy the book for. Now, the next thing that we're going to include that's very important is going to be this yellow button, which is the Amazon price right here. I'm going to get rid of sales rank and the used price. The yellow line just simply means what does Amazon as Amazon, the actual company, not like a third party seller, not me, not you, not rent you, not any textbook company. What is Amazon selling the book for? That's what this yellow line represents. So for example, you can see that today, if I click here today on the Keepa chart, it says that the Amazon new price is $213. And 32 cents. If I come up here to the buy box, it basically represents what a customer would check out with, with just one single click of the button. If they click buy now, the buy box is super important because most sales come through the buy box. You can see that there's a new buy box. There's also a used buy box, but basically Amazon selling their book for 213.32. Now, one thing that you notice about the Amazon new price is that again, Amazon's prices are also dynamic. They don't keep their price the same. They change it all the time. So you can see that Right now is actually the highest Amazon has priced this book in the past year at $213.32. But there have been moments where they've been a little bit cheaper. They've been $161. There's even been a time where Amazon was not on the listing. You see this little disconnect between these two points on the line that represents the fact that Amazon, for whatever reason, on those two days was not on the listing. If we kind of expand the graph to look at more data, you can also see that Amazon has a history of coming in and off of the, the listing. And you can also see that at some point, the lowest that they've ever been listed at was $99.99. And the reason why the Amazon price, the new price is so important, is simply because Amazon's new price is like the, the ceiling to as in, in regards to how much you can sell the book for. The bottom line is that Amazon is always going to get the buy box if they're the cheapest price available. Sometimes even if they're not the cheapest price available to get the buy box. But what I'm saying is that you'll never be able to sell your book in used or new condition for more than Amazon will. And what that means is they represent the ceiling. So this is basically giving you an indication of what's kind of like the max I could sell this book for. The way that I would interpret it is if the new price on Amazon is 213, there's no way that I would list a used book anything above that. I probably would actually want to be quite significantly underneath that just to make it worth it for a customer to, to decide to buy a used copy rather than a new copy. What I'm going to do now is actually show you the third party new price, which is probably the next most important thing. You should look on the keep graph and you can see that again, a third party new seller, that would be like you or like me 
rent you or any other third-party Amazon seller that is listing it in new condition, this again is going to show you the cheapest price available. So again, if we go to day, which would mean today's newest price, you can see that the lowest, newest third-party price is $200. If I scroll back up to the listing, you'll see that if I click on the new here, this says $200 from textbook source. Okay. Now what's really interesting about this again is that even though both of these represent new copies, this is the Amazon new price at 213 and this is the, the third-party new price at 200 Notice that Amazon is still winning the buy box and not this third-party seller. And that brings me to this point, which is if there's somebody selling the book in new condition and they're not Amazon, they're a third-party seller, generally you're going to see their price a little bit lower than Amazon's because they're going to try to win the buy box. And like I said, there's no way they're going to win the buy box if they're above Amazon. There's a possibility they could share the buy box if they're matching Amazon. But generally, if they're a little bit below Amazon, they're a little bit more competitive and maybe somebody would save a little bit of money by buying it from a third-party seller. And that's why you always see the third-party new price always a little bit lower than Amazon's price there. Okay, all I'm going to do now is go ahead and bring back the sales rank and I'm also going to bring back the use price. And now what we're going to do is try to analyze this Keepa chart. And what I want to do is look specifically at this one sales rank drop right here again, because I told you that if you overlap the lowest use price in the sales rank, that's basically going to tell you what the book sold for at the minimum. What this means is that the person who bought this book spent at least $115.93. If they bought it in use condition, if they bought it from a third party new seller, they paid $200. If they bought it from Amazon, they pay two thirteen thirty two, and what this gives us is a range for what the person who bought the book could have bought the book for. They paid at least one fifteen ninety three, but they could have paid somewhere in between these values in use condition because there again there are other used offers. This black line only represents the lowest used offer, so they could have bought it anywhere in between these two values. That would be the price that they actually bought the book for. Now let's zoom out and look at a little bit more data because again we we don't want to make our buying decision just off of one sale. We kind of want to look at the data holistically to see. What is the book actually selling for? So if we take a look here. One thing that we notice is that the use price is kind of all up and down. One thing that I would expect is that a lot of these sales are coming in use condition. And the reason why I would expect that, for example, the reason why I'd expect these sales could be in use condition is because you have to think about this as like a logical human being, a logical consumer. If you had to buy this book for college and you came on this listing and you had the option to buy it in use condition for $90, or to buy it new from a third party seller from 193 or to buy it from Amazon for 206 like what choice would you make a logical human being would want to spend $100 less to get this book in used condition where it's still usable and does exactly what they need now that doesn't mean that these sales aren't in the new condition it just means that think about this like a logical human being to try to make a best educated guess now we do see that this book has kind of sold all over the place it has some sales at 139 we got to sell up here for 138 again i'm saying the minimum that that book could have sold for. We have some sales in the minimum of 58, minimum of 75, could be higher than that as well. So this book has potential to sell for quite a bit of money. If you notice here back in June, you see that this book is actually sold for 45 on the minimum, um, 43 on the minimum. So this is kind of all over the place. And what recently happened to this book was a repricing war. And you can see this repricing war is kind of depicted by this downward staircase and use price. And the way that these repricing orders happen is when you have two or more sellers that have repricers, repricers just an automated software that lowers the price of, of their book in order to try to either win the buy box or get the lowest price. And if you have two softwares that have a rule to basically undercut the competition by a penny or by a dollar, you get this very steady decrease in price over time. And that offers an opportunity if you're using the Keep a Deals page, which is right here. And I show you how to use that in other videos. It gives you an opportunity to buy undervalued books. And so what I would say is that in my opinion, this book here at $13 per shipping, which is what I bought two copies at, that book is undervalued because on the low end, I'm basically looking at this book, seeing that it's selling for 45. On the high end, it can sell upwards of 130 or even more. So if I come over here to the software called SellerAmp, which by the way, you don't need, but there is a link in the description if you want to use it. It's just an easy way to run numbers with a calculator. And I put in my buy cost, which would have been like 1850, somewhere around there. And I go ahead and put in the sell price. If I'm being conservative, I'm thinking I can sell this book for 48 bucks. I'm going to make a $9 profit. If I think about what this book has sold for in the recent past, upwards of $90, that'd be a $44 profit. If this book sells for $130, which it has before in the, in the past, then I'd make $78, which would be amazing. But the point is I'm trying to buy an undervalued book here. And I think that this book is undervalued. Now, one thing 
that's really interesting about this book is that this is a textbook season book, yet it didn't sell in January. And at the beginning of the video, I said, hey, something really interesting about this book is the fact that this is a textbook season book, but it didn't sell in January. So why did it not sell in January? Again, what you got to do is you got to put on your thinking cap and you got to figure out, okay, what could be the possible reason why someone would not buy this in January when it is a textbook season? And generally, January and September, or sorry, January and August, those are times when people would want to buy a book. Well, what I did is I did a little bit of looking around and I said, okay, there happens to be a hardcover of this book. And if I click on the hardcover, you'll see that this is the same book, just in hardcover format. So not the loose leaf. Generally, what you need to know about hardcovers is that hardcovers tend to sell for more money than loose leaves do. They also tend to sell a little bit more than, than paperbacks do. And if you look at the same book back in January of this year, you see that its sales rank was actually amazing. Its sales rank went down to about 40,000. It was probably selling four or five times a day at least. And clearly there was demand for the book. So the question is, why would this book as the loose leaf version not have sold in January when the hardcover was? And the reason why I think that is the case is because if you look at the price of the hardcover in January, you can see that the lowest use price was right around $78.99. If I use my cursor to keep moving down on the lowest use price, we keep creeping down to $68. Then we even momentarily go all the way down to $41.63. So if we go back to the loose leaf listing, what I want you to notice is that the price of the loose leaf during that same time period was actually more expensive than the price of the hardcover. If you wanted to buy this as a loose leaf, you had to spend $86, then you had to spend $75. And my thinking is that if you were a logical human being and you needed this book for college because you were a student, would it make sense for you to spend more money for a loose leaf, which you have to go buy a binder for and you have to put it into a binder? Or does it make more sense to pay less money and get the hardcover? So my analysis of the reason why I think this book, this loose leaf hasn't sold or didn't sell in January was just due to the fact that its price was more expensive than the hardcover was. So that's my thoughts on why it didn't sell in January. I would bet that it is going to sell in January. And actually look what happened in analyzing this video, look at what happened to the use price. It jumped right back up here to 95. Remember when I said, if you go and look at day and you look at the use price, it's gonna show you what the use price is today on the Amazon listing. And you can see that right now the price is 95. So basically you can see that in fact, I did buy it for 1246 plus shipping. Now it's back up to 95 and you can see that I did purchase this today on December 31st. One other thing that you can do to try to confirm whether or not the deal that you're getting is a good deal is to look a little bit further back in history, kind of broaden the Keepa data. And you'll notice that, hey, this book here, especially in January, definitely did sell. And generally this book has been selling for north of $70, even north of $100 a lot of the time. So the reason why I picked this book up again is because I felt like it was grossly undervalued. And again, I was able to pick up two copies. I think on the low end, I'll be able to sell this for about $70 to $80. If I'm shooting for the moon, which honestly I might be doing because the new price is actually really high right now. I'm definitely gonna match the buy box, but I think I might even be able to go a little bit higher, especially since January is right around the corner. All right, everybody, that was Keep a Deep Dive episode two. That was my Keep analysis on this book. If you found it interesting, hit the like button, consider subscribing. And if you wanna learn how to find books on Amazon to resell on Amazon using the Keep a Product Finder, using the Keep a Track product feature, using the Keep a Deals page, which is what I use to find this book here, then follow the channel. I got tons of videos on the channel showing you how to do that. Join the live streams every Saturday at 6.30 a.m. PST. We go into a live online arbitrage sourcing using those Keepa features, using Flipmine. But that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Keepa Deep Dive Episode 3.